I have two YouTube channels and over about 12 years of doing this, I've made around 450 videos. And this one is gonna be one of the, if not the longest video out of them all. And it's because I don't wanna just tell you what I'd like to see changed with the Cybertruck design before it reaches production. I want to show you. I spent days making these models just so I could show you because if you're not somebody with a lot of experience owning trucks, if you're not somebody with experience taking trucks that you might have owned off-road, then a lot of the changes that I like to see made might not seem that important to you. But give me a chance to show you why these things are important. And I think you'll agree with at least some, if not all of the design changes that I'd like to see made to the Cybertruck before it reaches production. I put timestamps to the various sections of the video in the video description as well as in the comments below. So if anything starts to get too long for you, you can just skip ahead. But I'm gonna start with telling you why the Cybertruck design matters to me and what experience I have that makes me wanna change it. From 1990 until fall of 2018, when we got our Tesla Model 3, my daily driver was always some form of off-road capable four-wheel drive truck. I started with SUVs and then I switched over to pickup trucks in 2003. I grew up in the coal region of central Pennsylvania long before the internet was anything like we know it today. And off-roading was a primary source of recreation for my friends and me. Anytime we got bored, we just head for the coal mining roads where we'd find mud pits, we'd find ruts, we'd find boulder fields with these kind of toaster sized rocks that were left behind by ancient glaciers. We'd find these big puddles that would come up to our doors that we would drive through. And we had really, really tall, steep hill climbs. Our trucks were also how we'd get to our hunting spots, many of which were far away from pavement. We used our trucks to haul our ATVs around to various riding areas. I even loaded up my 91 Nissan Pathfinder and drove it on a three month, 19,000 mile trip from Pennsylvania to Alaska and back, driving on unimproved logging roads for days at a time. Though I don't do any recreational off-roading anymore, I still need to be able to head off pavement for places I hunt and shoot. I still need to be able to haul an ATV around. And as a do-it-yourselfer, I still need the cargo capacity of a truck during my frequent trips to our local home improvement stores. In fact, when we got our Model 3, I was driving a 2008 GMC Sierra Z71, and my wife was driving a 2005 Lexus LX470. One of them had to go, and since our LX470 seats seven and has been insanely reliable, I sadly turned over the keys to my GMC to Tesla. I have missed having a pickup truck ever since, so you can imagine how excited I was when Elon Musk started talking about the impending release of a Tesla pickup. It could be the best of both worlds for me. Everything that I love about my Model 3 and all of the functionality that I miss from my pickups. Of course, every time he would talk about this truck, he would talk about how weird and how crazy it was going to look without also talking about how those looks were the result of some kind of functionality. I became reserved to the idea that the aesthetics might not appeal to me, but those aesthetics couldn't get in the way of the functions that I needed from a pickup if I was going to buy one. On November 21st, 2019, what we now know as a Cybertruck rolled onto the stage behind Elon. I was not super excited by its looks, but let me jump to the punchline and say that the looks make sense to me now that more information is out about how the Cybertruck will be assembled. However, there were still a few things that jumped out at me throughout the presentation, leaving me worried that whatever truck guys they have on the design team don't have enough of a say in the design. That's okay though, because what this is is more of a concept vehicle than Tesla has ever displayed. This is is a hybrid unibody on frame, whereas the production Cybertruck is just gonna be one big steel unibody. That means the design team can make some pretty big changes without slowing the ultimate release of the production Cybertruck. This is a scale model of the existing Cybertruck design, and this is a scale model of what I would like the Cybertruck to be. You can see it still has the same soul of the original Cybertruck design, but it incorporates a few design changes that I think will make it more practical as well as easier to drive both on and off road. The most obvious differences are that I shorten the overall length and the wheelbase by one scale foot. I replace the peak of the roof that's currently formed by the edges of two panels of glass with a stainless steel cross member. And I also include a full size spare, though I do not think this is where it should be mounted. It'll be horrible for aerodynamics 
and efficiency. I just don't have the modeling skills to show it in place inside the bed where I think it should go, kind of like what Rivian does with their R1T pickup spare. Speaking of modeling skills, I want to thank the YouTube channel DIY Designer for creating this model and sharing the PDF I used to make both versions. I've linked in the video description to their video showing how to make your own paper Cybertruck. My version is obviously Coyote Tan, but it's actually the same 300 series stainless steel unibody underneath. I'm just showing you what I'm going to do to a Cybertruck if I get one. I'm going to rattle can it. I can't think of a better finish for a hard use truck than one that I could fix with just a little bit of sanding and a few spritzes of a spray can. One that I could change the color of very easily anytime I want to. There are a few other changes to the design that aren't as obvious comparing these two models. And I'll get to those, but first I'm gonna cover the obvious differences. I'm gonna start with the biggie, the incredibly long wheelbase. Elon made a big point about the footprint of the Cybertruck being no bigger than the footprint of the most popular four-door full-size pickup trucks on the market today. But it's not the overall length or even the overall width that causes problems for maneuverability with big trucks. It's the wheelbase. The longer a vehicle's wheelbase, the more width it needs to make a turn. Elon famously demonstrated the problem the Cybertruck's wheelbase creates when he drove over a sign leaving a nightclub. You can see how he drives by the sign with plenty of room, then stops the sign solidly with the left rear tire. Look again as the front of the Cybertruck clears the paint marking an oncoming lane of traffic, only to have the rear of the truck cut right through the middle of the lane. That's at least four feet of difference between the front and rear track. I built this Lego chassis to illustrate how big a difference wheelbase makes in turning track. For the first demonstration, I have the front wheels tacked in place with some hot glue to make sure I don't accidentally change the steering angle as I change the wheelbase. Changing the wheelbase is Lego easy, of course, and for both demos, I'm adjusting the wheelbase by two rows, which roughly equates to the reduction in wheelbase I hope Tesla applies to the Cybertruck. Notice that I'm keeping the overall length exactly the same. This is to show that while the footprint of your vehicle makes a difference in where it will fit, it's wheelbase that makes the biggest difference in how much room it needs to make a turn. The first demo shows how a longer wheelbase, shown in yellow, will have a larger turning radius for a given steering angle than a shorter wheelbase, shown in red. Again, the front wheels were tacked in place, so the only change between the two is wheelbase. You can see how a small change in wheelbase results in a full truck width and lateral displacement by the time the trucks have turned 180 degrees. For the second demo, both vehicles start in the same place. Place, and I adjusted the steering angle for the longer wheelbase so that when it reached 180 degrees, it traversed the same distance laterally. This would be like fitting a U-turn between two curbs. You can see how much tighter the rear wheels cut with just a small increase in wheelbase, even though the truck is otherwise making the same size turn overall. This shows why Elon ran over that sign, but it also shows how it wouldn't take much to make the Cybertruck easier to drive in town, park in standard parking lots, and get around parking decks and drive through Anybody who regularly drives a full-size pickup truck already knows this, but there's another aspect of wheelbase that typically only reveals itself when you're driving off-road. Your wheelbase affects something called breakover angle, which is basically a measure of how likely you're going to catch your belly on an obstacle. It is a number that is just as important to off-roaders as is the approach angle and the departure angle, but it was conspicuously absent from the prepared slide and from Elon Musk's speech about the Cybertruck's off-road prowess. And I do not think that was accidental. Here we are months later and Tesla still hasn't released an official breakover angle figure, but that's okay because these two models were built to scale. So by comparing the two, hopefully I'll be able to show you what it means. This diorama was built to demonstrate a very common trail obstacle where breakover angle matters. In fact, anytime you have a steep climb, whether it's a short ledge like this or a really tall hill climb, you're likely to have a sharp breakover as you reach the top. You're driving along this muddy trail when you come to a really common trail obstacle, a few steps that are made in the rock that doesn't erode as fast as the dirt. The excellent approach angle of the Cybertruck allows you to get your tires up onto the ledge and pull you on up. And as you're going on up, everything's hunky-dory. Your departure angle back here means you're not dragging 
on the trail behind you and then you get to right there and you get a little hung up if you have enough momentum you could keep going i probably should have made this obstacle <laughs> a little more challenging but right here this cyber truck is actually resting on the breakover on this obstacle on this ledge and what could happen is if this is really muddy down here the tires could end up spinning in the mud but you don't have enough weight on the front tires for it to be able to pull you up and over that break over now you're coming along the same trail in my version of the Cybertruck which is exactly the same as the original Cybertruck dimensions in every way except it's a foot shorter overall and the wheelbase is a foot shorter the interior cab is exactly the same the angle here is all exactly the same the approach angle is exactly the same so your front tires catch the ledge exactly the same and pull you up the departure angle is exactly the same so you're not dragging on the trail behind you and then you get to the breakover and you have no problems you have no problems clearing it in time for your back tire to start climbing you up the ledge all the way up over top and this really isn't even a very challenging obstacle at all it's a very common one that you're going to see on trails you don't even have to be on something that you can call a jeep trail to have an obstacle like that and the standard Cybertruck design with its really long wheelbase will have a lot of challenges with things like that both going up them and coming down them whereas if you <laughs> crash whereas my version with a foot shorter wheelbase doesn't have an issue with it at all GMC put together some great footage showing how breakover angle comes into play for the Sierra AT4. Their four-door half-ton with a factory lift kit. You can even see the truck bounce off a rock at the top, a very common occurrence when driving off-road. Not such a big deal for a conventional truck, but when the entire underside is made up of an expensive battery pack, hopefully the Cybertruck will have adequate protection for these kinds of impacts. You don't need to be rock crawling for your breakover angle to matter. Cresting any steep hill can cause you to high center and leave you stuck. Creek crossings and mud pits are two other obstacles that really test a truck's breakover angle. It can be really frustrating to make it all the way through a mud pit only to be sitting on your rails with your front tire spinning on dry trail and your back tires spinning in the mud. In fact, pretty much any time you're going to drop down into something or climb out of something, your breakover angle is going to have a big impact on your success. This is why four-door full-size pickups typically don't do that well on trails. Even Gucci'd up trucks like the excellent Ford Raptor Super Crew fall to the limitations of their wheelbase on obstacles that simply aren't a challenge to shorter trucks. Without any changes to its wheelbase, the Cybertruck is going to be among the worst performers off-road. Despite its insane torque, its 35-inch tires, its excellent traction control, None of that matters if you can't keep your tires on the ground when you're cresting a hill or you can't make a turn on a trail without scraping a boulder or running over a tree. The Cybertruck's wheelbase has been reported as 150 inches, which is longer than any other truck in its category, some of which are already notoriously tough to park in a parking lot. Its bed is also a whopping six and a half feet long, about a foot longer than the most popular bed size in the four-door half-ton market. By cutting a foot of length out of the middle of the Cybertruck, you still end up with a five and a half foot bed and you still have the same approach and departure angles. What you gain is a much better breakover angle for off-roading and a much tighter turning truck for better off and on-road maneuverability. You still have a bed as long as the most popular bed choice in the four-door full-size pickup truck market. I think Tesla has a better selling point to say that they offer a five and a half foot bed in a footprint that's more maneuverable than your standard full-size four-door pickup than in saying that they can fit a six and a half foot bed in a footprint that's the same or even worse maneuverability than your standard four-door full-size pickup. 
The Cybershark prototype has a ramp built into its tailgate, and the truck will even turn itself into a ramp to assist loading an ATV. That certainly looked really cool in the presentation. However, the vast majority of pickup owners have no need for a ramp, and even those that do, rarely do. Meanwhile, every time they open and close the Cybertruck's tailgate, they will have to deal with the added weight of the ramps. The guy in the presentation was young and fit, and even he seemed to struggle lifting that tailgate. It can even be a power lift tailgate, and built-in ramps could still cause problems. How are those gonna work when you get them all muddy from the tires of your ATV? Where is all of that junk gonna go when you close up the ramps? Nobody wants to have to clean off the ramps in the field before you put them away. None of that matters with standard ramps. You just throw them in the back of the truck when you're done with them, and you can rinse them off when you get home if you want to rinse them off at all. It doesn't matter. What's going to keep those ramps and all that debris from rattling around inside the tailgate, either off or on road? There's certainly going to be some way of stabilizing the ramps themselves, but I'll probably do nothing to silence all the rocks and the dried clumps of mud that's going to be in there with them. It's hard to tell due to the unusual proportions of the Cybertruck, but that tailgate looks really tall. The way I shorten this version of the Cybertruck makes the tailgate even taller. Tall tailgates create a problem that many manufacturers have devised solutions to. Anytime you open a tailgate, you have to reach over it and past it to put anything in the bed and unload anything out of it. Some manufacturers simply add steps and handles so you can climb past the tailgate and grab your stuff. GMC recently came out with what they call their multi-pro tailgate, which is like the Swiss army knife of tailgates. The feature that I'd use the most would be the ability to drop the center part of the tailgate straight down so you can simply get closer to your stuff in the bed. The multi-pro tailgate does a lot more than that though. You can turn that mini gate into a step when it's open. You can use the step as a load stop when the tailgate is flat or even when it's closed. The load surface is some sort of polymer so you don't have to worry about a spray on bed liner messing up its functions. You can just skip the tailgate and spray only the bed. That's really cool, but you don't even need to go that far to make the tailgate better. When I was a kid, we had a station wagon with a two-way tailgate that you could either flip down or open to the side. It is such a great idea that I cannot believe every tailgate isn't like that. The Honda Ridgeline dual action tailgate does that, but its tailgate is pretty puny compared to full-size pickups. Ram Truck's multifunction tailgate gives you 60-40 split barn door with the option to drop the whole thing down as one big tailgate. Swing it open when you just want to get your stuff or fold it down when you need more bed length. The split means you don't have to have a ton of space behind you to swing open the gate. Plus you can just swing the smaller side open with about the same extension as a folded down tailgate if you just need to grab something out of the bed. Which brings me to the Cybertruck's groove lined bed. Some have speculated that the grooves are T grooves intended to allow mounting of tie down points and gear stops pretty much anywhere in the bed. That definitely sounds awesome at first, but but let's introduce dirt into the equation again. How are you going to keep those grooves clean, T-grooves or just square grooves? You think you'll be able to just hose out mulch that gets shoved down into those grooves? What about gravel? You press a bunch of small rocks into those grooves, you're not getting them out. Pickup truck bed floors have looked pretty much the same across all manufacturers for decades for a reason. Wide ribs with shallow bends simply work really well for a broad range of bed uses. They help drain water, they make getting stuff in and out of the bed easier, even as they keep the contents more stable than a perfectly flat surface. Most of all, they are really easy to clean out. On top of that, current bed surfaces readily accept a wide variety of form-fitting bed liners, from spray-in liners to polymer bed liners to bed rugs. Bed liners not only protect beds from gouges and dents, they make the whole truck quieter. A big metal bed behind the cab is like the sound box on a guitar. It amplifies the noise of your rear tires and suspension. Spraying bed liner in the back deadens road noise tremendously, enough that I'd spend the money just for that benefit alone. And the Cybertruck is only going to be worse with what appears to be a metal bed cover instead of fiberglass or polymer filled with foam. The electric roll-up tonneau cover shown at the reveal was really slick visually, but I think it's a very bad idea for a number of reasons. I know people that have gotten rolling tonneau covers. I don't know anybody that's gotten a second rolling tonneau cover. Most find their drawbacks just aren't worth the cool factor, and they're only really convenient when they're mostly clean and not malfunctioning for some other reason. Plus, the box where they roll up into is taking up all that space whether the cover's open or closed. Before I get too far into the problems caused by rolling tonneau covers, I want to show you two options that I'd like to see for the Cybertruck. One option would be a removable clamshell cover like this. 
It'd be supported by gas struts and could even be motorized if Tesla wanted extra cool factor. The drawback is that you're going to be limited by the height of the cover unless you remove it. But it will be the easiest cover to use on a regular basis. When you do remove it, you then have to find a place to put it. This is certainly the main problem a rolling tonneau cover solves is you can easily stow the cover anywhere you might be. But a clamshell isn't the only manual option that would work really well with the Cybertruck. The second option would be a manual flip-up cover, which is exactly what I've been using on my most recent pickups and what I'd still put on any pickup I bought today that didn't already have a cover. Current covers flip up one section at a time, allowing you to open just the portion of the bed you need to access or you need to have additional height when loaded. However, you have to secure the parts that are flipped up so they don't flop around as you're driving. They can also only flip up because they're made to fit perfectly flat bed rails. Tesla has an opportunity to make a really cool change to this. Since they're incorporating a cover from the start, they can design the rails to allow this type of cover to flip under itself while still lying flat no matter how many sections have been folded. The same latches that hold the cover in place when closed can hold the cover in place when partially folded. One of the cool features flip-up covers have is that they stow against the rear window of the cab. This protects the window from damage while loading the bed or if something were to come loose during a hard stop. Tesla could add a track that will allow a fully folded cover to slide down against the back of the cab for storage while protecting the back window from damage. This could all be done without electronics or motors, parts that add expense, parts that are usually more prone to failure, especially the kinds of conditions that trucks are expected to handle, and parts that are more difficult to fix in the field. Like existing flip-up covers, this cover could also be removed for the rare occasion where none of its features are needed or for easy replacement if it gets damaged. Both a clamshell and a flip-up cover will work just fine when they're muddy. A clamshell will lift the mud and dirt with it, and a folding tonneau cover will close by just getting the chunks out of the pieces before they fold together. With a rolling tonneau cover, you might be able to open it when it's muddy, but as it's opening, it's gonna be flinging all that mud into the slots where it passes and down into the box where it stores. If you get enough mud caked in there and dried, you might not be able to close it again. Plus, at some point, you're gonna to need to get into that box and clean all that stuff out. And I haven't seen any way that you can do that with the Cybertruck yet. Got snow or ice where you live? Again, a clamshell or a folding cover will still work. You might have to knock the big snow out of the way or break the ice at the hinges, but they will still work. Forget getting a rolling tonneau cover to work when it's caked in ice. And even when it's covered in a light snow, you might be able to get it to start to open, but all that snow is going to be jamming in the slot and again down in the part where it goes in and you might not be able to get it all the way open. If you do get it all the way open, any snow and melt water that gets down into that box can refreeze and then you're never going to get it closed again <laughs> until you get everything thawed out. Cold isn't the only issue that a bed cover has to deal with. Heat is also an issue. I can't tell what Tesla's making their rolling tonneau cover out of, but you really want your bed cover to be made of a material that's going to insulate the stuff that's inside of your bed, as well as be made out of something that's gonna to help to deaden sound. A big metal vault, as Tesla calls it, isn't just going to be really noisy, but it has the potential to be a solar oven for anything you keep inside of it. Not only do you want to keep your gear from getting super hot so it doesn't get damaged, but at some point you're probably going to need to handle it and use it. Again, Tesla doesn't need to reinvent the wheel here. Off-the-shelf materials and insulation have been working great for bed covers for decades. That said, Elon recently tweeted that the HVAC is going to be able to condition the vault, so hopefully they're building it with insulation in all the right places. If Tesla designs the rails around accommodating a flip-up cover, then they've got a ready to go mounting surface for specialty racks like those for carrying kayaks or for toppers for people who want a little more height in protecting the gear that they haul around like a dog crate. The rails on the rolling tonneau cover shown on the presentation don't seem like they lend themselves to the secure mounting of heavy duty racks or toppers. Speaking of secure mounting, though I've been showing the spare tire sitting on top of the Cybertruck, that is a horrible place to put it. However, for all that Tesla showed about the Cybertruck in the presentation, including a trunk in the bed, 
there was not a spare tire to be seen at all. This is a very important question because no current Tesla has a spare tire or even a dedicated space to put one if you were to buy one. That might be tolerable for a sedan or a crossover where you could just call roadside assistance for help, but you're much more likely to get a flat tire on a truck when you're off-road or on a job site. And the first word in roadside assistance is roadside. <laughs> when you're off-road, you are going to be your own off-road assistance and a spare tire is going to be something that you're really going to want to have. The question then becomes where do you mount a spare tire on the Cybertruck? But both Rivian and Honda have something to say about that. Rivian keeps a full-size 34-inch spare under a flip-up cover in the bed. If they can pull that off with a 185 kilowatt hour mega pack underneath in a significantly smaller truck, Cybertruck should also have the room for a 35-inch spare. In fact, Tesla could probably keep some or all of the rear trunk the way Honda does in the Ridgeline. Even though the Ridgeline spare is puny compared to the meats on the Cybertruck, Tesla might be able to put a spare on a tray that rolls into the trunk for easier access without having to crawl into the bed. Of course, any any spare access through a panel in the bed will be difficult to get to when the bed is filled with gear or materials. That's why the Ridgeline has a built-in mount on the back of the cab. I can't imagine that a 35-inch spare tire is going to be able to mount up against the cab upright on the Cybertruck, but I'd much rather have to pull everything out of a bed to access a spare tire than have to call somebody to bring one to me, whether I'm off or on road. In fact, if Tesla doesn't provide a spare tire with the Cybertruck, I'm not gonna get one until I can figure out an efficient way to mount one inside of the bed. It's possible that the lack of spare had more to do with how the Cybertruck concept vehicle was built and less about a design philosophy. When they go to a full unibody and get rid of the frame underneath, the Cybertruck is gonna have more room in the basement, so to speak. So it might be that there just wasn't room for a spare tire in the Cybertruck concept vehicle that's going to appear in the production vehicle. It could also be that the rolling tonneau covers storage bin is taking up room in the bed where they could put a spare tire, but that would be all the more reason to get rid of it in favor of something more simple. I think the craziest part of the entire Cybertruck design is the peak of the roof being formed by the exposed edges of two panels of glass. Yes, Tesla's armor glass is supposed to be tougher than conventional laminated glass, but it doesn't matter. The weakest part of any crystalline panel is its edge buy a lot. You're not even supposed to set real ceramic or glass armor down on its edges because even a light impact can compromise the protection provided by the entire rest of the panel. Tesla armor glass will be no different. In fact, the meme generating window failure was probably caused by impact to the edge of the panel when Franz struck the door with the sledgehammer. Even after successfully stopping the steel ball multiple times in practice, the window broke with the first impact after its edges were subjected to stress from the body panel demo. Yet the current roof design will subject the edges of two very large panels of glass to impacts from low hanging branches, acorns, sleet or hail, and whatever else might otherwise bounce off a conventional metal metal truck roof without damage. That's why I'd like to see the peak formed by stainless steel instead. This won't change the view from the inside because there's already a cross member right there on the interior of the truck. It will only change the exterior aesthetics, though I still think it's a really cool look. Tesla does have a light bar hidden behind the glass for a really cool effect, but an actual light bar won't meet DOT regulations, and whatever marker lighting they'd want to hide behind glass could still be hidden under the edge of the windshield. It would just be a few inches lower. Barring that, Tesla should put a bumper of some kind over this edge. Otherwise, I think you're going to have a lot of glass failures, either by direct hits to these edges or by hits to the windshield that it would have otherwise been able to tolerate if it weren't previously weakened by edge hits. There are some features I'd like to see any electric pickup truck have, like advanced traction control to allow you to get out of mud or sand or snow. Take a look at videos of Toyota's A-Track system to see what I'm talking about, but traction control off-road isn't just about limiting slip, it's often about allowing a certain amount of slip and the right amount 
is gonna vary based upon the kind of surface you're on. A transfer case isn't needed with electric motors because generally they put 100% of their torque down at zero RPM. However, torque multiplication isn't the only advantage of a transfer case. It also reduces throttle sensitivity, which gives you more granular control over how much power you put to the ground. This is especially important when you're rocking and rolling and bouncing over obstacles. Of course, Tesla doesn't actually need to put a transfer case in the Cybertruck to get that. They could just create a throttle map that'll do the exact same thing. I'm confident features like those and more will be a part of the Cybertruck, whether they're available upon release or they come with updates sometime later. But I thought I'd ask for them ahead of time anyway. Tesla's gonna be able to sell as many Cybertrucks as they can build, at least at first, just based on the looks alone. They don't need to make these changes, but if they do, I think their customers will be happier with them and not just the ones that are buying them as the ultimate look at me vehicle that they are. Long term, these changes, I, I don't see them turning somebody away from a Cybertruck if this is the version that got them interested in it, but I think it will make more people interested in buying one once they start getting in the hands of customers. If you're looking to get a Tesla for yourself, be sure to use my Tesla owner's referral link. You can see it right down here. It'll get you free supercharging if you do. Full details about the Tesla owner's referral program can be found at the link itself. Be sure to subscribe so you can see more Cybertruck videos. I really appreciate you watching the Tech of Tech and I hope to see you next time.